Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be discussing the Gaithi Washed Kenya from Sweet Clean. And there's the bag right there. And let's get some very quick housekeeping notes out of the way. So as mentioned in the last full bag box review of the Dark Arts Coffee, my computer had crashed. As you can see, I got it back up and running again, but I still lost all of my notes and my flavor wheels. So. I'm gonna be have to do this one on memory. I have a pretty good idea. I remember how the coffee was to start with and it just won't be as in depth, just like the Dark Arts wasn't. This is day 20 of this coffee, by the way. The good news is going forward, I think I have things back up and running, so I should be able to uh, get my notes down again and be able to give these thorough in depth reviews of the bags of coffee. A little more about this coffee specifically. I did, I was actually kind of excited when they came out with this one. A lot of coffee roasters are coming out with Kenyas at this time, and I think you'll notice that in my video catalog I don't have too, too many Kenya reviews. And that's actually for a reason. I'm not the biggest Kenya person in the world. Some people get the tomato taste out of Kenyas, and I think that maybe it might be a taster thing. I could be entirely wrong. But I do get tomato out of a lot of the Kenyas I've drank in my life definitely very common in pretty much any place I know in Seattle that serves Kenya's. Sweet Bloom is the exception to the rule. I've almost never had a tomato-y taste from Sweet Bloom. Here and there I can get some of those darker red fruits, maybe some cranberries, pomegranates, but never tomato as much. Definitely the darker a coffee is roasted, I definitely feel more tomato. But we'll go ahead and jump right into this coffee and start discussing it. Again, I lost my notes, but what was interesting was the first day I tried this, which was day 10, a little later than normal, but I just found the bag somewhere. I kind of got some coconut and peach, which is not listed as their flavor notes here, but it was very prominent coconut and peach. What was kind of interesting was throughout the life of this coffee, that's pretty much what I was getting. For the first three, four, five, six days, I was getting a lot of coconut and a lot of peach. And the further it went along, it did start to turn into a little bit more of the other stone fruits, some darker stone fruits. I was getting a, quite a bit of that plum. The coconut seemed to die down and taper off, and I definitely wasn't getting as much of that. At this point, I am getting a bit of, just a slight bit of chocolate. I'm taking a look at my flavor wheel, just a slight bit of chocolate and definitely some orange. Tasting this coffee now on day 20, uh, I feel like there's that orange chocolate thing that I'm missing. That's pretty much what this tastes like for me right now. Wish I remembered what that was called. Anyway, since I don't have my notes, we'll jump right into the tasting wheel now and you'll see what I was tasting. Again, sweet, sweet bloom coffees always seem to be pretty sweet. Floral's kind of high, which was kind of surprising. You know, now that I think about it, yeah, definitely still some nice florals in this coffee. Seems to be consistent with the life of this coffee as well. There were definitely some really nice florals in here. Uh, citrus fruit, relatively high, a bit of orange. I think maybe, I think three is actually perfect for that because even now it's not abundantly orange, but it's definitely some maybe orange zest. And then the stone fruit's definitely the highest thing I put on this list because between the peach and the plum, definitely the most notable and definitely the most prominent things in this coffee. Very sugary plum as I'm drinking it today. I'm actually really, you know what, I'm really enjoying this coffee right now. And let's go ahead and start talking about who I would recommend this coffee to. And I think I actually have a great idea on who this is a perfect coffee for. This is a coffee for your Kenya haters. There are so many people like myself that aren't the biggest Kenya fans in the world and I think once you find a Kenya that doesn't have those like very strict red flavor notes to it, it's worth giving to somebody and saying, hey look, here, here's a coffee that doesn't have to taste like cranberries, it doesn't have to taste like pomegranates, it doesn't have to taste like tomatoes, this can actually taste like other fruits. And they can have very nice subtle and prominent fruit flavors to it, something you can enjoy a little bit more than I guess the things you're just not a big fan of. I've had Kenyas from Heart and I couldn't I couldn't do Heart's Kenyas and I've had uh, Kenyas from uh, Onyx and I wasn't the biggest fan. Sweet Bloom is the one coffee roaster I feel like always seems to get the Kenyas right. I love their Kenyas. And this Kenya right here is a standout. 
Kind of wanted to try their other Kenya. It sounded very similar though, and this one just sounded the better one of the two. So I just went with this one, and this one fits great. So that's what I'm gonna leave with on this coffee. If you've tried this one as well though, please let me know what you thought. And let me know what you thought of Kenya's actually in general, because I had a great discussion and debate about it, and it's very interesting to see how much other people just absolutely love Kenya's. If you're new to the channel, uh, subscribe. I've gotten a couple of new subscribers as well again, and I really appreciate all the support. So this right here has been a discussion on the washed Kenya from Sweet Lim, the Kathisi. Thank you for watching.